Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to talk about a structure which you can get in the London, but you can also get it from a number of other openings. Um, what am I talking about? Well, let's take a look. D4, D5, Bishop F4, Knight F6, E3, C5, C3, Knight E6, Knight D2, and one of the things that black can do is this. Usually, you will take with this one. You can also take with this one, but that's just a symmetrical pawn structure with your knight slightly misplaced, because if you take here, your knight would rather be on c3. <clears throat> so you will take back this way, and now we have this structure with white having this, black having this. You can get the structure from other openings, for example, Caro can. Let's say e4, c6, d4, d5. Um, you take, third main move, takes, takes. And now, <clears throat> if you want, you can play, well, you can play bishop d3 first. And let's say they play knight c6. And now you play c3. You have the same structure. And black will eventually play e6. And today, I want to talk about how to attack in these structures. And to give you an example, I want to look at the game which a student of mine played last week at the National Middle School Championship, as you can tell. He actually did quite well, which is why his game made it to chess.com. Um, he tied for first in his section, going undefeated and reaching a new rating of 1650, so great job to Sudip. Um, and let's take a look. This game actually started as a Scandinavian, e4, d5. Um, if you ever play e4 as your first move, you need to take, and after black takes, you need to play knight c3 to attack the queen. And now the queen has several choices. In this game, the queen went back, um, so Deep takes control of the center, black developed his knight, so Deep developed his knight, black pinned this knight, now so Deep's move is very natural, if you ever playing the Scandinavian, um, the best move here is h3, if the bishop drops back to play g4, followed by knight e5, but <clears throat> um, that's a story for a different time. In this game, white simply unpinned. Black played e6, which makes sense. Now, since this bishop came out, black moves e6 to bring the other bishop. <clears throat> so deep castles. Black decides to be super solid. All his pawns on the light squares, which means he does not mind to trade his light square bishop if he needs because his pawns are controlling all their light squares. Okay, so deep develops his other bishop. Black plays here, attacking the bishop and possibly trying to ruin the pawns. So deep takes, black takes back. Taking with this pawn is not so good because this line is open and the king is still in the middle. Now, computer wants Sudip to play c4 and try to rip open the middle, but Sudip plays this move, and guess what? We get the structure which we talked about. <clears throat> Essentially, this is the London where white traded um, this knight for this knight. Everything else is the same. Black brought his bishop outside of the pawn chain. And now let's see how we can play these positions. Black plays bishop e7, which makes sense, because he wants to castle. Knight e5, um, <clears throat> taking control of the center, um, well, centralizing the knight, to be more precise, and also opening this up. Black took, so deep took back. Black developed his knight, and so deep plays queen b5, which is an interesting move. It starts black from castling because we attack in this twice. Black does not want to play rook b8 because he walks 
into this. So after rook b8, we can take. And this is nice. So black played queen c8, and now watch what Sudip does. <clears throat> he plays rook e1, and his point is maybe he will rook lift in case of black castles. Maybe he will drop the bishop somewhere um, and push f4, f5 to open up both rooks. <clears throat> Black kicks the queen. Now, so deep could trade, um, but then the entire advantage, which we have, is going to go away. So, so deep drops the queen back. Black castles. So deep drops the bishop. His plan is to play f4, f5. Black decides to trade. So deep takes with the bishop, which is sensible. Black plays queen d7 to connect the rooks. Maybe the queen can go here. So deep obviously threatens one move checkmate. Black would like to block, but this is simply a free bishop because of this. Um, black would also like to block with a pawn, but this creates a long-term problem on this square because this pawn is no longer defended by his friend. <clears throat> so, black play g6. And now Sudip uses the second idea which we mentioned. He plays rook e3 to try to swing the rook here. And the point is, if allowed, he would like to sacrifice and then play there in checkmate. Let me show you. Let's pretend black ignores things. Let's say b5. We play here. Let's say he keeps ignoring things. Now we can take, we try and checkmate. If black takes, we do this. Not this, by the way, because the bishop, but this, and then checkmate. That's the problem with the weak dark squares. Now, <clears throat> let's go back. After rook e3, black plays h5, which is not a very good move, because Sudip finds a very nice continuation, rook h3. Rook h3 is a really, really nice move. Black cannot take because checkmate. But the problem is this is not just hope chess. We're actually threatening to take um, because of this pin. If black tries to unpin, I will pause and have you find the crushing move. And I hope you were able to find rook takes pawn. The point being, obviously, it's a check. If king moves, checkmate. And if black takes with the pawn, now this is checkmate. Let's go back. <clears throat> After rook h3, black tries to keep this line closed. But now Sudip opens it up, pawn g3. Black plays queen g8. Sudip wins the pawn. Now there are ideas of h5. Black tries to trade off this very powerful bishop. And Sudip plays a very nice move, pawn f4. The point is if black takes, which is what happened, so deep will take back with a pawn, and now all this is open. Um, black plays king g7. Uh, maybe he is trying to move the rook and run away. So deep plays rook f6. <clears throat> this is a very powerful rook. Black is trying to run away, and now so deep goes for a break. Black plays a tricky move, pawn g5. It looks like white cannot take because black will go here, win our queen. But this doesn't work because we can actually sacrifice. Check. Check. And we up a lot of material. In the game, Sudip was reluctant to take. Um, so instead he checked. If the king goes here, we can either push the pawn and we can take here, using the spin. In the game, the king went the other way. So deep won another pawn, and another pawn, and he went on to win in about 10 moves. Um, he's up several pawns, and his attack is continuing. Um, so what I want to, what I want you to take away from this is a lot of the time you're going to get this structure. Let me. Yeah, this structure in the London, and usually in these structures, you want to attack on the king side. Sometimes you can attack in the middle, and you can find this game on chess.com, 
and you can look it on your own and hopefully you will be able to use these ideas <clears throat> that we learned in your own games. Thank you very much. Please subscribe. I will be back soon.